from the air, it looks like a giant construction set just waiting to be assembled. Because that's exactly what it is. From this base in hull, steel towers, fiberglass blades and all important turbines are being bolted together 75 miles out to sea to make the world's largest offshore wind farm. So these sections are the top third of the tower. This is the thinnest bit. It's, come, it's narrowed up from eight metres at the bottom through to here at the top. Just a week after the first turbine components left port, it was assembled and generating electricity. The scale has transformed. We're now using much bigger turbines. We're now installing much bigger wind farms. We're also doing it further offshore. We've been able to do this for a much lower cost of electricity. And it's probably the best and lowest cost solution that we've got available to us. The sheer size of these new wind turbines means just one rotation produces enough electricity to power a home for 24 hours. Each one is 154 metres across, meaning each blade is nearly as wide as the world's largest passenger plane. And at 190 metres high, they dwarf central London's BT Tower. And bigger projects mean wind makes up a greater share of generation. Today, for example, a quarter of our electricity came from wind, compared to the next largest low-carbon source, nuclear, at just 15% and falling. And unlike nuclear, scale means the cost of wind power is coming down. This factory in Hull makes the turbine blades. Each one of these blades is 75 metres long and they've effectively been handcrafted out of balsa wood and fibreglass. And they've had to make 522 of them at this facility for the Hornsey One project. The industry is definitely scaling up. So we're more or less at our full manufacturing rate for this size of blade. So, you know, real securing the jobs of the thousand people that work here. In the summer, we'll be moving on to the next blade type. So the 81 metre, which is even bigger again, and that's for the Hornsey 2 project. All right, all right. Yeah. The success of offshore wind isn't some sort of industrial miracle. We paid for it. UK energy customers will hand over more than four billion pounds in subsidy to Hornsey 1. But the cost of the next phase, Hornsey 2, is coming in at half that. It's unlikely turbines like this will ever meet all our electricity needs all the time, but the wind is on the way to becoming the dominant force in our power sector for decades to come. Tom Clark, News at 10.